What's up everybody? This is Jeff. Welcome to Board Bozos. This is the first video in a line of mini documentaries that we here at Board Bozos are calling The Essentials. Uh, the Essentials are games that we feel are undisputed classics. Uh, the, you know, the games that belong in every serious game collection anywhere on the entire planet. Now, these videos are not going to be reviews. They are not reviews, and they're also not how to play. So if you haven't played these games before, this is not the place for you to get first impressions. You know, we have there's plenty of other videos out there that we would recommend um, to learn how to play games or reviews and, and, and initial impressions. That's not what the goal here is. The goal here is to really celebrate games that we feel really stand out, that really exemplify uh, creative game design and, and really good theming and elegant again, streamlined mechanics and things like that. Up first is unequivocally one of the best two-player games ever designed, and that is Lost Cities. Uh, if you've never played Lost Cities before, um, here are a couple links uh, that you can use, uh, how to plays, reviews, things like that. If you need to get yourself caught up, uh, check out these cool videos, learn how the game works, and come back here. Now, Lost Cities was designed by the man the myth of the game design legend Weiner Knizia, and it is a total masterpiece. Uh, no other game in his catalog strikes that rich, gooey center of simplicity meets strategic depth, uh, except for perhaps um, one of his other two-player card games, Battle Line, or Shot and Totten, or Shot and Totten, you know, Shot and Totten whatever it's called, as it's, it's been released under that title as well. Uh, now, Lost Cities is sometimes criticized Lost Cities is sometimes criticized as being two-player solitaire or a complete luck fest, and I've never understood these claims. They could they they, they don't they don't make any sense to me. I mean, you might as well pay, say poker is entirely luck, and if you think poker is entirely luck, you are probably not a very serious gamer. And okay, so yeah, all you do in Lost Cities is play a card into one of five columns and then draw a card. But the interactivity, the hand management, the bluffing elements, all of those aspects of Lost Cities are very underappreciated by the people that don't uh, think very highly of the game. Much of the interest in a game of Lost Cities comes not from deliberately withholding cards your opponent needs, but in withholding information from your opponent as well, so they're not quite sure which cards you need. So that's where the bluffing comes in. So it, that's what I think is really one of the things that's really cool about it is that you are simultaneously trying to figure out which cards your opponent needs while trying to keep your opponent from knowing which cards you need. Uh, and uh, sometimes that means you have to delay your most valuable delay your most valuable expedition until halfway through the round, uh, you know, after your opponent has discarded a bunch of the color that you actually need, or sometimes you bluff an expedition knowing that you're barely going to break even just to shake up the game and, and make them try to hoard cards that you're not actually going for. And those are both very viable ways to manipulate the game space and give yourself an edge. Another thing that Lost Cities does that it doesn't get enough credit for is the extremely nuanced way in which the players control the pace of the game. The way you can buy time by taking only discards or rush the end of the round by drawing only from the deck is not something that a ton of other games have really ever featured. Uh, you know, some games have an elements like this. Seasons comes to mind as you can kind of control the pace of that game. Um, but Lost Cities really does it in a very simple, very elegant way that I think is really, really cool. Um, just the simple idea of being able to draw your opponent's discards is something that creates an interactive back and forth, unlike almost any other player game I've ever played. And even without the back and forth between opponents, the game does strike a rich balance of risk and reward with its scoring mechanics that encourage bravura, but you know, sometimes punish that bravura seriously. Uh, you know, should you go for low, low scoring expeditions or two massive scoring expeditions? And how do you keep all the cards you need for later when you can only hold eight? How long should you hold out before playing that ten? Fuck, it ain't coming. Fuck, now you get the nine. Damn it! Might as well discard it next turn. Wait, why did you pick that up in the first place? They haven't even started that expedition. You know, just like, so those are some of the thoughts that will go through your head as you're playing around of Lost Cities. And that kind of stuff I think is really, really interesting. And the strategies just keep coming. This is one of those games that I feel like the more you play it, the more strategies you start to think of. And the variety at which these different, at, at, the, the way that someone's personality changes the way they approach the game is really, really interesting. Uh, you know, I, I, with some people, I've played the game 20 or 30 games, you know, 20 or 30 times with the same opponent, and really, that's when the game really starts to show its depth, when the unique ideas start parting up, uh, you know, when the really unique ideas start popping up, like, um, 
you know, like dumping all of your red cards in order to go to your opponent to also dump theirs, confident that you're not going after red either, and then just drawing them back up discreetly one by one and scoring them before they realize what you're up to. Uh, there's also a devilish mischief in burning a first-time player by showing them at the end of the round that you were holding every card they needed to score big and watching their eyes light up with a deeper understanding of the game. Uh, if Lost Cities was truly a luck fest, skilled players wouldn't destroy new players, which they absolutely do. If Lost Cities was truly two players solitaire, then your actions wouldn't impact your opponent's range of options, which literally every single one of your actions does. Every time you hold on to a high value card they could benefit from, or taunt them by playing a blue investment card immediately after they play the blue two, or give them a mercy by discarding a card you know they want simply because of how much you spanked them in the first round, you, know, you are directly directly influencing their control over the game. Which brings me to another luck mitigating aspect of the game, cumulative scoring. Cumulative scoring. Bad card draws, give the deck a shuffle, give it another go. You know, the chances that the deck's gonna go against you, so to speak, three um, rounds in a row is extremely unlikely. Uh, Lost Cities is a special game, very special game to me, and it's enjoyable on so many different levels. Uh, the renowned editors at Wikipedia list the only skill required of the game to be quote-unquote strategic thought. So I thought that was funny, because basically if you're capable of playing a game, you're capable of playing Lost Cities. Uh, and it scales up very well to being intensely competitive as you play it more and more and more. So it's casual, uh, but at the same time it has that depth to really become uh, something that you can play a lot and take very seriously. It almost reminds me of cribbage in that way. Um, so there, and there's a reason why there are posts on Board Game Geek about Lost Cities saving their marriages and playing Lost Cities in the hospital during labor and people showing off their own customized versions of it with re-themes and new art and components. And, and you know, the, the game almost approaches Catan fever and the passion of its fan base. And in some ways, I've seen it go even further. Uh, a lot of games have gotten digital versions for the mobile phones, but Lost Cities was turned into a video game as far back as 2008. And it was on the Xbox Live Arcade, although for some reason it did get taken down less than a year later. I think it was a right conflict, a rights conflict between publishers or something like that. But fast forward even now, and the enticing simplicity of the game is still drawing the influence of video game designers as Lost Cities has a very unique privilege, and that is of being the first board game to be turned into a full virtual reality experience. Uh, and that was done by a game design company known as the Campfire Union. And to think, you know, at the time, Lost Cities Lost Cities was considered too simple to be published. You know, there wouldn't be a market for it. That's what they thought. Uh, you know, a card game for only two players. Uh, you know, Reiner Knizia has an interview uh, with the website Fun Again that he, where he mentions that he almost gave up on trying to get the game out there. That it would have to be one of his designs uh, that gets shelved and forgotten. Um, because he has other better designs out there. But, you know, but there was a market for two-player card games, uh, especially ones with deceptive simplicity. A huge market. Uh, a little company called Cosmos practically built an entire brand around it, including publishing Kinesia's masterpiece. Uh, Lost Cities has been in print for nearly 20 years, and it has been since expanded into a board game, uh, the board game called Keltus. I don't know if you heard about Keltus. Uh, and Keltus won the fucking Spiel des Jahres, which is, you know, the highest... That one of the highest honors in the industry uh, for games of this sort, which really makes you think, you know, what other markets are out there and tapped and waiting? Like, what what other games uh, will be the ones that discover these markets? Will these new games be, you know, will, will they have exciting ideas and fresh themes and modern mechanics, or are there going to be lost classics that resurface with a level of polish and a ton of clever ideas that people didn't think possible for, you know, for their time? You know, I'm sure there's a couple un new masterpieces that got pushed under the under the uh, uh, you know, under the rug that are going to come with a new reprint and really take the world by storm. Yeah, and if for no other reason than as an indelible reminder of the diversity and elegance that can be achieved in even low-complexity two-player card games, Lost Cities is an absolutely essential game that should be among the first handful of two-player games that you add to your collection. And if there's only a few names in the game industry that stick in your head, let one of them be Reiner Knizia, because I assure you this is not the last time you'll see his name pop up in our ongoing list of board game essentials. So that, the, that's my uh, two cents 
on Lost Cities, the first game that we are deeming essential to be in every collection here at Board Bozos. We have a bunch more of these videos planned. We've played a lot of games here, and there's some that we really think stand out as just must plays. The games that you just, they have their time and their place, and for that time and place, there's nothing better than this particular game. So if you have any recommendations uh, for games that you think are that level of quality, uh, let us know. So thanks for listening. Uh, hopefully I was able to you know, share one or two insights about the great game of Lost Cities, a game I love, and I will see you bozos later. Check this out. <laughs> Douche. <laughs> <laughs>